everyone. It's Debbie Marina with Prophetics Gallery, and I'm here with Trudy um, Wistathusen from, I hope I pronounced that right. I don't think I did just now. <laughs> did I, Trudy? <laughs> Wistazen. <laughs> Wistazen. I'm so sorry. We were just practicing it before, and I, I messed up. Oh, well. So that's not good. But anyway, thank you, Trudy, okay. for coming today. Um, Trudy is with us from South Africa. And she is going to discuss some of her art pieces that she has in our gallery and the story behind them. And we're so excited to have her just go over everything and her process. So welcome, Trudy. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, good to see you. Please go ahead and start. Tell us about the pieces that you have. Well, uh, where would you like me to start with the with the process, or uh, yeah, would you like me to start with the pieces? Yeah, start with the pieces, and then we can talk about each one, and you can talk about the process with that one, and the the word about them uh, about that particular piece, and anything else you might have in the way of a testimony um, of anyone that might have received the piece and had some kind of thing happen for them, whether it be a healing or brought hope or something of that sort or deliverance. So yeah, go ahead, start. Well, let me give you a brief background quickly. I um, was not trained in painting or art at all. Oh, wow. I was in a technical school and I was in the IT uh, business before I um, uh, you know, resigned and started homeschooling my children. And uh, then I have always had this desire since I was a child to paint. And uh, this desire just quickly faded over the years um, when nothing came of it. And um, five years ago, or four years ago, we missed a year with COVID, but anyway, <laughs> I think it's five, five years ago. Um, you know, I started reading the scriptures and I was just getting these visions and I was seeing myself painting this and I wasn't exactly sure how on earth I'm going to do this, but uh, I've always had this desire in my heart. And then, you know, there was an arts conference and I attended and I just started wow. so um i have with every single painting that i'm doing i am so very much very much uh dependent on holy spirit to help me i cannot start without him i cannot paint without him i literally cannot paint without him wow. so because i don't have any training or or anything we i've i've done a few skills work now recently um now you know in the past year uh you know where i've learned a few things and so on but um artistic training i've had none so i um try to paint everything that holy spirit shows me i can't always paint everything because of time restraints I don't paint very quickly. So I have to um, be very careful with what I select when I do paint. Okay. So I would like to start, I'll start with this one, where um, I was going through uh, most of my paintings that I do has got a little bit of um, myself in them. So everything that I do paint has has a word for me in that as well not just for someone else but most of the time it's for me and then it progresses on to someone else to a church or to a particular person i've painted a few paintings where it was um, over a specific church or a church group or um uh, you know there was a painting the line of judah i don't have a, a print of that one now but that specific word was over South Africa and we released um, that painting was huge two meter by one meter and that word was released over South Africa and uh, you know prophetic uh, profound prophetic word most of the prophetic words came true already from that painting 
and from other paintings that was done in the same. Um, so prophetic art is, you know, powerful, yes. powerful. It can speak over a person's life. It can speak over a nation. It can speak over a church group. I've seen people healed with prophetic art. I've seen people delivered through prophetic art. So, you know, I always say when Moses made the snake, he had to sort of make it to look like a snake, right? And everyone that looked at it was healed. So I believe that Holy Spirit came upon him to be able to, to make that, that um, you know, statue, um, uh, the snake thing. And uh, that's what I believe he does, you know, for me, if he gives me a vision uh, and he wants me to, if he commissions me to paint it, then he gives me the, the gift and, and everything that I need to be able to paint that. And if I trust him to take over the, the brush, then it just flows. That's so true. So yeah, in the Bible, um, Bezalel was anointed. Um, yes, accident. that's true. Yeah, to make yes. the mercy seat yes. and um, and the tabernacle. And it's just amazing mm. how that was such um, anointed, they were anointed pieces. Yes. And God is still doing that today. He's filling his artists up um, and he's giving them a commission to go out and create pieces like you are. And it really is touching people just like Moses' staff. Um, mm -hmm. when he raised the snake and that, that was one of the things that he did and then it became real mm -hmm. and then the Lord told him to pick it back up again. It's funny, that particular staff is used in the medical field today and it's part yes. of the symbol for the medical field. It's that shield, you'll see it on a lot of the hospitals and That's medical true. doctors. Yeah, so it's really cool and God uses that particular item as a you know a symbol of healing so yeah mm -hmm. he's doing the same thing with your art so yeah i'm very excited so go ahead tell us so, more. so this first piece was uh more for me uh, this was a process that i was going through to um uh, you know find out the the father's love for me and growing up without a father myself mm -hmm. i wasn't really quite sure um you know seeing my husband with my daughter uh, so much healing took place and the God, the Lord was taking me through uh, lots of different processes, um, being delivered and being healed from um, not having a father, not understanding the father's love. Mm -hmm. And then I had this vision of um, this little girl where the father, father God just comes and he kisses her. And, and even though, you know, kissing her, you know, makes the crown skew or whatever it's absolutely fine because it's love just you know is there and just it's it's more valuable and more worth than anything else more worth than the crown more worth than than anything we can ever imagine so the def the definition of this piece let me just show you oh i love that one <laughs> I love it's it. It's called the Father's Love, and it's the transition from becoming an orphan um, to becoming a daughter or a son of God. Mm. So um, the scripture there that I put there was John 17, verse 22 to 23. And there's uh, quite a lot of other, um, you know, we can go into so much detail of every um, art piece and it's just never ending. The thing with prophetic art is that, um, you know, for one person, it can mean something. And for someone else, it can mean something totally different. Mm -hmm. When they see it, Holy Spirit speaks to them in that moment. And they could be healed. They could be delivered or whatever. And he could just give them that word for that instance. So for me, that, that art piece was, was talking about the love of the Father you know, just kissing you, smooching you, and just loving on you. Oh, that's such a so great this... mm, I love it. And, you know, I'm sitting here watching this, and for someone who never did art before, your work is incredible. I've, 
I just can't get over Thank how you. wonderful. And God and the Holy Spirit does that. And we've had several other artists say that uh to me over the last few years that oh i never knew how to do any kind of painting i did stick painting and then all of a sudden the lord anoints them put something in their heart and the next thing you know they're creating these phenomenal fine art pieces and i'm just like praise god you know you don't have to go to art school sometimes you go to holy spirit yeah. school of art you know it's so great and it's yeah. so good to hear this so yeah you know and, and a lot of a lot of artists that i sometimes speak with um, that's been to art school, they say that they struggle sometimes to transition over from, mm -hmm. from that skill to just being dependent on Holy Spirit. And um, I think for me, you know, I, I can't do it without him. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but then again, I do know of some artists that do transition easily. Mm -hmm. So it, it all, it's all relationship based. Yeah. It is all, it's got everything to do with your relationship with, with Holy Spirit. You know, you need to have a close relationship with him. Um, if I don't, uh, if I don't spend time with him, if I don't make time with him, if I'm not, um, you know, being a servant to the king, then I don't get any visions. You know, it doesn't come. It, it doesn't work. It's not happening. So. I need to have that, that close relationship with him all the time and be in the holy place, be in his presence, you know. Yeah, so good. Yes. So I used to um, do ballet as well growing up. Um, I danced uh, since I was five years old until I was 23. Oh. Then I hung up my ballet shoes. And um, so I, I have uh, experience being on stage and dancing. And the Lord has taken me um through that process as well of performance based and competition based where everything is a competition to coming back to where it's got meaning mm. so for me when i started painting i i the, all the time i was comparing my my artwork with with all the rest and i all the time i was saying oh dear you know it doesn't i can't even see what it is you know it doesn't look like anything and yet it touched someone's life so profoundly and uh, someone got healed uh, delivered or whatever through that piece of art that i think was ridiculous because of that competition spirit you know mm -hmm. so the lord had helped me through that transition as well coming out of that it doesn't have to be perfect we need to understand that the art does not have to be perfect. It is not about exactly what it looks like, but what it produces, the power of it, yes. you know? And this is what this piece was about. Um, I love that. It's called Endurance. And I know exactly how this feels like. And I, I asked the Lord, why exactly do you want me to paint this? And he said, well, when you dance on your toes on stage, it is painful mm -hmm. because that's exactly what it looks like inside the ballet shoe. However, there comes a point in the dance where everything just fades away. The audience fades away. The pain fades away. And it's just you dancing and then he said to me this is what i want you to experience with me when you come to me when you come to the secret place when you come to the holy place you know and it, it's not always easy to enter into that place with all the 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 nonsense going around you know all around us um troubles that we're experiencing issues that we're having this and that that we need to sort out and and you know time consuming and we have to do this and we have to do that and he says just come to me spend a little time with me just stop whatever you're doing and have that experience where it's just quiet where it's you and me and we can just dance together oh. and and that's what that painting is about it's called endurance because you have to endure to make time to spend that time with him 
to just be quiet and switch off everything and have that special moment with him. So good. Um, the, that painting was also sold to a lady that um, is a friend of mine. And she, uh, when she saw it, it touched her profoundly. Uh, same, same thing, you know, spending time with God, making that time with him. Um, yeah. Good. So Good. the next one I want to share, this was quite uh, interesting. This painting, I'll show you. This is called The Healer. Uh, this is a vision that my husband had. Um, and often I sometimes paint his visions. And they are, I always say to him, those are the most powerful ones. But this one is called The Healer. We had a Kingdom Come conference uh, just before COVID hit South Africa or when it was released in the media that um, we are going into lockdown. Uh, we had a Kingdom Come conference and we did not know about COVID. We did not know what was going on. Nothing was released yet. Nothing was known yet. And I was painting on stage and I started this painting on a blank canvas. And this is quite a big painting. It's a, a one meter. I think it was one meter by 1.5, I think. Um, Yes, and I painted this whole painting in 45 minutes. Wow. So I always say to everyone on stage, I always say to everyone, this is insane because I'm a slow painter. <laughs> and um, again, you know, Holy Spirit coming upon you. Yeah. I was not happy with the painting after the conference. Uh, I wanted to finish it. But the lady that bought the painting said, please, please give it to me just as it is. Don't change anything on it. And I asked Holy Spirit, please, you need to help me through this process. Because when I look at it, I need to finish that. It's not finished for me. And then he said again, let it go. Let it go. It's not about whether it's done or, or perfect. Um, it needs to be uh that lady needs to take it for herself mm -hmm. and the painting's name was the healer uh, yeah so okay. before covid yeah. hit south africa i mean come on yeah it, it's about 1 peter 2 verse 24 by whose stripes you were healed mm -hmm. and um you know so many scriptures and I wrote here, we know that the Lord is coming for a glorious bride, one without wrinkle or spot. But Paul's prayer reveals a desire that his bride be blameless, not only in spirit and soul, but also in body. May Holy Spirit start a revival of healing, touching us fully. And this was released on stage in front of, I think, 2,000 people uh, attended the conference. Uh, Bill Johnson was there and, um, wow. you know, oh. and then COVID hit and we, we went into lockdown. So the Lord was speaking clearly through a painting, you know, to yeah. let us know that this is what we need to do. Yeah, we need to just, uh, we need to him. stay close to him yeah. Yeah. and we need to stay in prayer mm -hmm. and we need to understand that he is our healer. Yes. You know? Yes, so good. Oh my goodness, I love that. I don't know if you have time. If we have time for more. Yes, we do. Go ahead. Okay. Then I have this one. I love that one too. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah, adorable. It's called Valuable. So we found this 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 actual this little bird. Um, it was shivering in the rain. It was a sparrow and it couldn't fly in the rain it was sitting there shivering and my my daughter picked it up and we took it home and we started taking care of it and um it actually got tame it was sitting on their shoulder and and it was a sparrow oh, wow. so i said to the lord why why do we always end up because this was now the third bird <laughs> that we were <laughs> 
third or the fourth bird that we were rescuing. And I said to him, what is going on? Are you trying to tell me something? And he said, every time uh, you find a little bird, I know about that bird. And uh, that's why the painting is called Valuable because um, it's a sw it was a swallow, sorry. That's all right. I'm not sure if that's the same, no. No, yeah. Swallow, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but he was, um, speaking to me about that scripture that says, I know about every single bird. How much more are you valuable to me? You know, and again, uh, it, it just boggled my mind that how, you know, if he knows about every single little bird that falls to the ground, how much more important are we to him? Yeah. That little bird was so important to him that we saved it and we rescued it. It just, it's mind boggling how important we are to him. And I gave this, I actually gave this painting away to someone that was, that's very close to me that has, that was going through um, very, very deep issues, you know, um, self-hatred, all those kinds of things. And uh, she still looks at this painting every day and she says, it's such a reminder for her that, you know, she is worth so much to the Lord that, um, you know, you, you can't think of yourself, uh, self-hatred and, and self-doubt and, and all these thoughts, if he loves you that much. Yes. Some people lose sight of it. I've um, talked with various people over the years that are going through depression, anxiety, Probably even more so nowadays with with this whole COVID thing and yes, you know, with the absolutely. yeah, with all the uncertainty that's in the world today, and there's it's mm. caused so much angst and anxiety and depression, yes. and people don't see their worth, and we have yeah. to remind them that you know Jesus made them, knew about them before He even formed them in the womb, and He had a plan and a purpose and. That little Absolutely. Pharaoh um, uh, had a plan and a, God had a plan and a purpose for yes. us. And so, and, and we are far more valuable to him than even the bird. So it's so important to remind people. And I think that piece is so good because it's going to remind people that they are valuable, that there's mm -hmm. no shame in things that might have happened to them. And everyone that I have spoken with, um, I do a lot of inner healing and deliverance counseling within our church. And uh, after having a son that had gone through that, and I learned more about how prophetic art helped him and also the inner healing uh, sessions, how they helped. But it's really important um, that sometimes the artwork, which it did for my son, touched his life. Sometimes it's music, sometimes it's poetry, or it could be, you know, a book or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, God knows us and knows our heart and he's going to touch us in one way or another but the prophetic art piece like that that's going to touch so many souls so many people that are hurting um to understand that they are valuable i love it how oh, truly that was awesome you know, with, with a lot of inner healings you know people often see visions um most of the ones that i've been uh, a part of have seen visions uh -huh. rarely they see uh, you know pictures mm -hmm. uh, most of the time just imagine how powerful it would be if you could give them that visual yeah. of that image that they were seeing in their inner healing room constantly being reminded of that yeah, yeah. you know a, a visual is, is extremely powerful yeah, my I would son, like to share. My son, excuse me, my son had a visual of the father's heart before he was, he really gave his heart to the Lord. He was a teenager and it was this presence. And I mentioned it once before in one of our sessions with another artist, but uh, it bears repeating that that visual was this heart and it was actually painted in the back of a painting that was an abstract. And, um, 
it, it really touched his heart because it was something he had before he came to know the Lord. And then when he went through his depression later in his 20s, early 20s, um, it was in the back of this painting that this artist would never have known that. And Justin didn't even know she was painting this piece for him up on stage. And she, like you, was listening to the Holy Spirit and Father God and Jesus when she was painting. And they had her paint this abstract. And in the background is this piece that only my son would know mm. existed for him, you know. So it's really interesting how God uses the prophetic art to touch them and show them visions of what they've seen at one point or another. And yes. it only proves that yes. they are real. And they are not this distant God. They are no. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Trinity are real and they're alive and well. And they're talking to us all the time mm -hmm. through different people, from through different things like art and music and so forth. So, yeah. Oh, what amazing. I cannot tell you how many times that have happened. Really? Oh, so many times. And then sometimes I would paint something and... Um, uh, someone you know some people would see something totally different mm. and I wouldn't even see it <laughs> yeah. but then after the painting is finished sometimes even in the photograph then I would only see it because uh, you know there's always these hidden things in prophetic art yeah um, which is just amazing mm. so what happened um, with this next art piece this is a past soft pastel drawing oh that's pretty this was my this was my first soft pastel drawing i've ever done <laughs> oh it's amazing look at the detail in the hands they're just amazing wow so the story behind this one i'll tell you um very very close friend of mine her very young brother passed away oh. and um i was driving to her everyone was in shock i was driving to her and i was sitting next to her praying for her and i had this vision oh. and the lord said to me you need to paint this now he had a, a or you know do a soft pastel but he had he had a quite a rough life and uh, the first question that his mom asked was, I don't know where he is. I don't know. He was on his deathbed um, in hospital. And I'm not sure if he made it right with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I had this vision and um, it's called Mother's Prayers. Oh. And I asked the Lord, what is this about? And he said to me, this is the prayers of her mother that he's kept in a bowl all the years that she's prayed. Oh, wow. So every little of these is a prayer held oh. up oh. inside a golden bowl. And you can see this is incense coming out of it of these prayers and written on his mother's prayers oh. so he said to me while i was praying for her i said if he said every single tear that her mom cried for her son was kept yeah. every single prayer was kept for him oh. and when he was on his deathbed the lord asked for those prayers to be called up again oh, wow. i said that's all i see so we don't know we don't know it's a it's a mystery of of the lord but that's all he wanted her to know and and i've always also learned debbie if if the lord gives you something don't add right upon that you know that that's all he gave me so i didn't want to add on that word you know this is a word for her mother and this is what i saw i can't add anything on top of that mm. if if she wants to ask the lord you know what does it mean that's that's her that's between her and god okay so this this painting to me this 
soft pastel to me. It was quite a huge one um, that I made. And I framed it for her and I gave it to her mom. Oh. And it's hanging in her in her little house. So every time she thinks of her son, she looks at the prayers that's in the golden bowl that the Lord never forgot. Oh, yeah. And and okay. she's constantly reminded of those prayers. And he, you know, the idea behind the whole thing was that her prayers was heard. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever comes of that we don't know we we would never know what happened on his deathbed you know when he was still alive we don't know what happened but um that was her word and that was the the vision i had and quite profound um she said she came back with many many testimonies of other mothers who who saw this oh. was so touched and just constantly reminded that every single prayer that that goes up for our kids are being kept you know the lord keeps every single prayer every single tear that that falls that you know for our children he keeps and he keeps his promises that's so powerful and you know i've always said that a mother's prayer is the most powerful prayer. I'm not oh, yes. that dad's prayers are not, but the mother is is the one in the family that keeps the family together, mm -hmm. emotional, um, where dads are always logical and out there working and so forth. And um, not to say women aren't out there working too, but I'm just saying that they are the nurturing ones and God listens to their prayers and listens to their cries and uh, every tear is stored up in a bottle for each of us, no matter who we are, but definitely the mom's tears, because we go through a lot of tears raising our kids at home, yes. trying yes, to, do. you know, teach them the right ways and, and yes. you know, the right thing to do and um, nurturing them when they fall and hurt themselves. And even as they get older, I have adult kids now, young adult kids, they're in their 30s, early 30s. And, you know, you still pray for them. It never goes away. Of and you're course. always concerned for them. And even though they're, you know, I have a daughter in England and a son here in, in North Carolina, but uh, she's so far away. And I'm just constantly praying, you know, prayers of um, protection and so forth. And, you know, you pray for your kids that they marry the right person and, you know, and that they have the right friends. Yes. So it never goes yes. away. And I believe God, I think you're absolutely right. And that's such a wonderful example, visual example that our prayers, my prayers, fill up that bowl, I'm sure over the years of them being yes. in their 30s. And so of um, course. it's so good. It's so good. That's such a great reminder. And for that lady to he see that and know that her it, it was her son or daughter, you said. Yes, it was yeah. her son yeah that that God heard those prayers and you can you know my feeling is I'm sure he heard those prayers and it also says that God always gives the person up to the last hour an of opportunity course. and I'm sure for, because of those prayers he had an opportunity to come to know the Lord before he was that's that's home. what I was thinking as well yes that, my heart feels that but you know, everybody's interpretation might be a little different, but I, I truly believe that God heard those prayers and he answered them. Yeah. And mama is that, strong. <laughs> Mamas are strong yes. and God loves our, his, you know, the mamas today. And when amen. yeah, amen. So also Trudy, um, tell people how they can get in touch with you. Um, do you have a website? I know you're They're going to be able to buy your prints through us. And I'll mention that in a minute, but is there a website that people can go to, to see more of your work and the process? We're still busy with my website. It's not up yet. I do have a Facebook page. Oh, good. It okay. is. If you, if you want to look for me, you can just search for Trudy at his paintbrush oh, yes. and you'll find me on facebook um i don't have a, i don't produce um quite a lot of art you know on top of each other because i am uh limited in time and also um you know my process is quite slow 
<laughs> but I well, enjoy, it. I enjoy it. You were saying you were homeschooling your kids to me earlier. Yes, I'm homeschooling my children. They're still very young. Yeah. So I'm finding the balance between working and, and homeschooling. I'm painting, you know, almost full time. Yeah. Homeschooling homeschooling 50%, painting 50%. So I love to paint. I enjoy painting. And um, so it's a slow process for me, but uh, when Holy Spirit comes, then sometimes yeah. it's quick. <laughs> yeah, well, it's wonderful. Everything was beautiful. Thank you for sharing all of this today. I really appreciate it, Trudy. And uh, we just ask God to bless you and continue in your prophetic art and reaching people through visual form. It's just Thank absolutely you. beautiful. Yeah. I love what Holy Spirit's doing with you and your ministry. It's just beautiful. Thank you so much for coming on today. And Pleasure. Um, we'll have you again soon. Um, and yes, and I'll, I'll do some YouTube videos. We, I'm looking to do some YouTube videos to explain more of my art and uh, some of my new paintings. And um, yeah, and okay. my website should be up soon. Good. And we're working on all of that. It's and we'll just make... going very fast for me. Yes, I know, just so much going on, I know. Well, we'll get those videos up for the audience to see on our Facebook for Prophetics Gallery. And yes, um, you. again, you can buy prints of all the work that Trudy showed today at propheticsgallery.com. And uh, if you have any more questions about uh, anything with Trudy, just feel free to get in touch with us or get in touch with Trudy through her Facebook page. Our um, email is propheticsgallery at gmail.com. So thanks everybody for joining us today. And thank you, Trudy, again for coming on. And thanks we'll talk everyone. to everyone soon. Take care. Yes. God bless. Bye-bye.